Welcome to Neustadt Satellite Channel and Telemir TV. Let's start with the headlines. Pope Francis celebrates the Ash Wednesday blessing and inaugurates the blessed season in Flint. The priests of the Latin Patriarchate express their gratitude to Bishop Jamal Khadr for his distinguished service in the kingdom. Under royal patronage, the opening of the Church of the Three Moons in Dibin, Jaraj Governorate. Nursat interviews Bishop Joseph Matta about the situation of Christians in Palestine. Welcome back. Pope Francis presided over the Divine Liturgy and the Ash Wednesday Blessing Ceremony at the Basilica of St. Sabina in Rome, marking the beginning of the blessed season of Lent. In his address to the faithful, His Holiness emphasized the importance of practicing charity, prayer, and fasting in secret. He urged believers to return to the reality of their humanity, acknowledging that they are dust and God shapes the dust to withstand the winds of life and not be consumed in the abyss of death. The Holy Father added that during the weeks of Lent, believers should create a space for silent worship, listening attentively in the presence of the Lord. Pope Francis concluded his sermon by encouraging self-awareness, acknowledging our humble origins as dust loved by God. Through His grace, we are reborn from the ashes of sin into a new life in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. King Abdullah II emphasized the need to halt the attacks by extremist settlers on Palestinians in the West Bank and Jerusalem. He stated that military and security solutions will not achieve peace, and the only way forward is to build a political horizon based on the two-state solution. His Majesty reiterated the necessity of launching a serious political process leading to a just and comprehensive peace, including the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital by the 4th of June 1967 borders. King Abdullah II reaffirmed Jordan's rejection of any attempts that could lead to the displacement of people from their lands, either internally or externally. He considered such actions to be universally condemned, urging the international community to take action to stop the destructive war in Gaza, which has caused a humanitarian catastrophe affecting generations in the region. Representing His Majesty King Abdullah II, His Highness Prince Ghazi bin Muhammad, the Chief Advisor for Religious and Cultural Affairs, inaugurated the Church of the Three Moons for the Orthodox in the Bin Jarash Governorate in the presence of Her Highness Princess Maryam Ghazi. The opening ceremony was attended by His Beatitude Patriarch Theophilus III, the Patriarch of the Holy City, and various officials from Jordan and Palestine, along with several priests. Bishop Christophorus Atallah, the Orthodox Bishop of Jordan, mentioned that the opening of his church coincides with the 25th anniversary of His Majesty King Abdullah II assuming his constitutional powers. He emphasized that Jordan serves as a model for coexistence, a haven for the secure, and an oasis for security and stability. The architectural designs of the church were inspired by Jordan's traditional building artistry, reflecting a Byzantine and Roman architectural spirit. The Virgin of Nazareth Church in Sofia, Amman, celebrated a Thanksgiving and farewell mass for the Deputy Latin Patriarch in Jordan, Bishop Jamal Khadr, who was recently appointed as the Bishop of Djibouti and Somalia by His Holiness Pope Francis. The liturgy was presided over by Bishop Jamal Khadr in the presence of his Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, and attended by several bishops, priests, monks, nuns, and a large congregation of parishioners and believers. In his speech, Bishop Jamal Khadr expressed his love and gratitude to the Almighty Pope Francis and Patriarch Pizzabella, as well as to all those who supported and assisted him in his pastoral service in Jordan. The Latin Patriarchate priest extended their gratitude to Bishop Jamal Khadr on the occasion of the conclusion of his service in Jordan and his transition to the Diocese of Djibouti and Somalia. Father Bashir Badr, on behalf of the Latin Patriarchate, thanked Bishop Khadr for his distinguished service in the Jordanian Diocese. Towards the end of the celebration, Patriarch Pizzabella addressed Bishop Khadr, stating that although he is moving to Djibouti, he will remain a part of the Latin Patriarchate family and their prayer will always accompany him. The Patriarch expressed gratitude for Bishop Khadr's commitment during his priestly service. The event concluded with the exchange of congratulations, creating an atmosphere filled with mixed emotions of joy and sorrow, as well as pride and appreciation for Bishop Khadr's apostolic and humanitarian journey.
On the occasion of the feast of the entry of the Lord into the temple, His Grace Bishop Christophorus Atallah, the Orthodox Bishop of Jordan, presided over the Divine Liturgy at the Cathedral of the Entry of the Lord into the Temple in Swafiyya. At the end of the service, His Grace extended special greetings to the priests of the cathedral, its congregation, and all the priests on the occasion of the church's feast, wishing them many years filled with holiness, grace, and blessings. Archimandrite Christophorus in turn expressed his greetings on this occasion, praying that the Divine Child may grant His Grace many long and blessed years to shepherd the Church of Christ. After the liturgy, everyone gathered around His Grace in the Church Hall for greetings and to share in the Feast of Love prepared by the Church's Women's Committee. Several priests and deacons assisted in the service and a multiple of parishioners were present to join in the celebration. During his visit to Jordan, Nur Sat had an interview with His Eminence Dr. Yusuf Matta, the Archbishop of Hakka, Haifa, Nazareth, and all the Galilee for the Melkite Greek Catholic Church. Dr. Basim Al-Sam'an, the Regional Director of Nur Sat in the Holy Land, Jordan and Palestine, conducted the interview with His Eminence. They discussed the current situation in the occupied territories, focusing on the unique circumstances of Christians living there and the various challenges they face in their lives and relationships with the surrounding community. His Eminence also spoke about the conditions of the Church in the Palestinian territories, including Gaza, expressing his hope for peace in the Palestine and the world. Stay tuned for this interview to gain more insight into the challenges and aspirations of the Christian community in that region. Join us for further details and analysis. The Director of UNRWA in the Jordan region, Olaf Bakir, expressed his appreciation and gratitude to the Jordanian government for its continuous support to the agency. He particularly commended the recent decision by the Jordanian government to exempt UNRWA from the cost of schools textbook for four years, amounting to four million Jordanian dinars. This came during a meeting that brought together the Director General of the Palestinian Affairs Department, Engineer Rafiq Khirfan, and his counterpart, Bakir. The meeting covered a range of topics and issues related to UNRWA's work in the kingdom. The two state side also discussed the overall situation of UNRWA in Gaza, given the suspension of support from 16 donor countries. They emphasized that this suspension would hinder the provision of essential humanitarian assistance, which the people of Gaza are in urgent need of. After a year since its establishment, the United Arab Emirates celebrated the inauguration of the House of Abraham, which included three floors of worship comprising of a mosque, a church, and a synagogue. The building began welcoming visitors on the 1st of March last year. The president of the House of Abraham, Muhammad Khalifa al-Mubarak, emphasized that the opening of this institution reflects the vision and values of the UAE in promoting humanitarian encounters, cultural dialogue, and diversity. The House will dedicate its efforts to enhancing coexistence for future generations based on the principles of human fraternity document signed by Pope Francis and Dr. Ahmed al tayyib the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar in Abu Dhabi in 2019. During the inauguration ceremony, Cardinal Miguel Ayusel, the President of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, stated that the House of Ibrahim in Abu Dhabi serves as an exemplary model for individuals of various religions, cultures, traditions, and beliefs to return to the essence. Its focus lies in promoting dialogue and mutual respect on the path of peace. The program An Eye on the East, presented by Father Nabil Haddad on Facebook and Nusa TV, hosted Father Rashid Mistrih, the general manager of Teresanta Santa College. The discussion revolved around the college and its schools in Jordan, after 75 years since its establishment in Amman. They talked about its role in building distinguished generations raised on faith and loyalty to the mission of Teresanta, Santa, which seeks to promote love among the students and graduates and to ensure the best of our society. The college has contributed to shaping leadership figures that played a significant role in the nation's progress. Father Mistrih also spoke about the role of Franciscan monasticism in education. Education. In Palestine, specifically in the devastated city of Gaza, due to the ongoing Israeli aggression on the region, Father Yusuf Asad, the priest of the Holy Family Church, led the first Friday prayer with the beginning of the sacred 40 day fasting period. The prayer was attended by a number of parishioners residing in the Gaza Strip. In his sermon, Father Asad spoke about the role of faith in our lives, stating, We are called to fast, pray, and engage in acts of kindness. Through faith, our prayer acquires a supernatural strength that compels us to abandon many things that displeases God and adopting a new ways of life that brings us closer to Him. Father Yusuf Asad concluded prayer with a supplication for peace in Gaza and the Holy Land. He ended by saying, Remember, O human, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. From Gaza as well, a report from the Church's Painful Assistance Organization indicates that around 30 Christians have lost their lives in the Gaza Strip since the outbreak of the war last October. Among them, 10 individuals succumbed to chronic illnesses for which adequate treatment was not available. 
Additionally, two women were killed by a sniper in the parish of the Holy Family Catholic Church, and their deaths sparked widespread anger. Due to the war, a severe humanitarian crisis has unfolded in the region. The organization highlighted shortages of fuel and electricity, dispersing the operation of pumps, forcing residents to manually extract water from wells. The church's painful assistance organization revealed its collaboration with the Latin Patriarchate in Jerusalem to provide medicine, for and fund certain medical procedures for those affected by the conflict. The organization stated that extensive destruction of homes and infrastructure makes the future bleak for Christians in the area. The reconstruction of Gaza may extend for many years, according to some international agencies actively involved on the ground. Here, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis celebrates the Ash Wednesday blessing and inaugurates the blessed season in Flint. The priests of the Latin Patriarchate express their gratitude to Bishop Jamal Khadr for his distinguished service in the kingdom. Under royal patronage, the opening of the Church of the Three Moons in Dibin, Jaraj Governorate. Nursat interviews Bishop Joseph Matta about the situation of Christians in Palestine. For more details, please visit our website, nursatjo.org. Wishing you a pleasant time. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again.